If a man is denied the right to live the life that he or she believes in, then they have no choice but to become an outlaw. Tata Nelson Mandela. This is your invitation to become an outlaw, a rebel that is resilient and who has empathy for self and others, a rebel who is willing to break those rules so that he or she can evolve. But most importantly, a rebel that is not afraid to lighten up. From Cinderella, Peter Pan, to Luke Skywalker, and even Mahatma Gandhi, who all had their fair share of trauma. Yet, as true rebels, they never ever allowed the darkness to consume them. So I'm hoping by the end of this talk that you would join our campaign to create one million rebels by 2030, because I truly believe that together we can transform trauma into happily ever after. Are you with me? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, my rebel journey started as a wee girl. Now, being born in a tent in Namibia and being raised in South Africa meant I was resilient by nature, so nothing to brag about there. But it was during this time that something odd was going on within me. I became quite an optimist, always looking for the light within and around me. Now, at one point, I actually lost my job working at a photo processing lab just because I couldn't focus on the negatives, honestly. <laughs> Unfortunately, the real reason is, when I was a five-year-old girl, I saw the light leave someone's eyes, someone whom I loved dearly. My mum, she was a good girl. She did everything that society asked of her and more. She was a good wife, good mother, a good daughter, but no one told her to keep her own light alive. And little by little, that light inside of her became dimmer and dimmer. Until one day, she was completely consumed by the darkness around her. So on this fateful night, on the 6th of January 1986, my mum chose death over breath. And forever her beautiful light <laughs> was extinguished. And my trauma story started, which led me down a dark path of self-destruction and even addiction. Now, I just want you to, to pause for a second, because perhaps you feel activated by hearing these words, or perhaps triggered by your own trauma, and I want you to know that it's okay. Whatever you're feeling, it's okay. It's okay for us to feel emotions, to feel sadness, to feel pain. And there's a quick little tool that you can use, and it's just two short little in-breaths through your nose, and then release. So it's and you can immediately just feel your, your nervous system feeling relaxed and um, let go. You see, the thing about trauma is, it's actually a beautiful thing, because it tells a story of change, evolution, transformation, whatever you want to call it. And once you've experienced a traumatic event, you'll never be the same again, right? But that's the purpose of life. We're supposed to evolve, we're supposed to change, not stay in the same position day in and day out. Otherwise, we'd still be stuck in the Stone Age days, right? Now, according to the World Health Organization, according to the survey that they've done, 70% of the, of the, the uh, participants experience trauma at one point or another, and it's still the biggest cause of death, far surpassing all the illnesses around the world. And of these traumatic deaths, 15% of them are caused by suicide. So I think it's safe to say that we need to start taking this topic a lot more seriously than we are currently at. Now, if we look at uh, what the definition of trauma is from a somatic point of view, it's simply undigested life experiences stuck in our soma, our bodies, because we didn't have the tools or the resources to release it in an adequate manner. And like Dr. Gabor Matei so eloquently explained, trauma is not the event itself, but it's how we respond to it. So when those social gurus say, just get out of your own way, it's not you getting out of your own way, it's trauma. And we need to start changing this narrative and learn a bit more compassion for self and others. So, as you can imagine, as a five-year-old girl, I didn't have the adequate tools or resources to deal with the death of my mum, right? So what I did is I told myself a little story. I told myself a story that said I wasn't good enough. I was broken. I wasn't worth loving. Because if she would choose to die rather than be with me, then that means I'm damaged goods, right? That makes sense to a five-year-old girl. And that is oftentimes what we do. If we don't have adequate tools, we make up our own stories, our own trauma stories. And the thing is, that is when we need to break it. 
We need to start being willing to break those rules. And so on the 3rd of September, 2017, I built up the courage to start facing my biggest fear. And that was the beautiful journey, my, my sober journey of self-love and healing that started. And it all started in that moment of being willing to break those rules. And I had to list them all, all those little stories that I've been telling myself. Because you see, deep down inside, you will probably find there's always a little voice inside of you say, that's not true. You are good enough. You are worth loving. But in my case, I built this big wall around me and I wouldn't allow the softer, more vulnerable part of me in. Not because I was mean, because I didn't want to get hurt. And that's the thing about life. We're supposed to feel pain. We're supposed to feel anger. Because if we don't, we become disassociated, depressed, and it can even lead to suicide. So I would like to gift you this opportunity to try and help you break your limiting beliefs, your trauma stories, so that you can evolve and become more rebel. And there's a very simple little practice that we can do. So as a trauma-informed practitioner, I use a range of tools that you heard, acupuncture, and I wish I could come and just give everyone a little bit of acupuncture in the ears, but unfortunately, time is not on my side, so I can't do that. But what I can do is give you a form of guided meditation. Okay, so are you with me? You good to go? Yeah? Okay. So I want you just to relax as you are, just sit where you are, just breathe in, and I'm going to ask you now to look up to the ceiling. And as you do, I want you to take a nice deep belly breath in through your heart, through your throat, and hold the breath in between your eyes to the count of three, two, one, and release. Another nice deep belly breath in through your belly, through your heart, through your throat, in between your eyes, and hold three, two, one, and release. And now I want you to close your eyes and just gently drop your head forward. And I want you to bring a memory back in your time when you were carefree. Perhaps you were a small child or a teenager or in your 20s. You had nothing to do, nowhere to go. All you had to do was play and have fun. So bring that back, this beautiful, beautiful memory. And as you do, I want you to hold it into your heart space. And I want you to imagine there's this soft, beautiful, cushy cloud that just come drifting here in front of you and inviting you to lie down on it. And as you lie down, you sink deeper and deeper into this beautiful, soft, cushy cloud. It feels like a nice, warm blankie. And as we go deeper, deeper into the land of magic and make-believe, I want you to imagine, as you see the beautiful stars shining above you, galaxies passing you by, now we are in the land of magic and make-believe, where anything is possible. And now with this emotion of feeling good and calm and loved and adored, I want you to bring your future life. What would your dream life look like? What are you wearing? How are people speaking to you? Who is with you? Where do you stay? Are you in a palace, a mansion? Have you got that dream job, that business you always dreamt of? What is that perfect vision of you being loved, being adored? And remember, there's no, no too th uh, such a thing as too greedy or too much. Just dream up this beautiful life. And it must feel good. And if you want, you can just tap your heart and just anchor it in this beautiful image of you having everything you've always dreamt of. And now, I'm going to ask you to think and feel what has been holding you back. What is your trauma story standing in your way of achieving this dream life? And you know exactly what it is. And I want you now to open uh, your eyes, and you've got a little gift bag, and there's a balloon in there, a balloon and a pen. I want you to take that out. And I want you to blow all your fears, all your limiting beliefs. I want you to blow it in this balloon. Okay. All your... Ooh, I'm off. 
<laughs> fear of failure, fear of loss, fear of ridicule. Whatever your fear is, perhaps feeling too young, too old, just blow it in this balloon. Once you're done, you can tie it. And if you struggle, ask a friend, because that's what true rebels do. <laughs> you ask for help. <laughs> There's no such thing as too small or too big a balloon, okay? <laughs> Size doesn't count in this room. <laughs> okay, that's good. Oh, it looks happy, it looks like a party. <laughs> Now, I want you just to hold this balloon in your hand. If you haven't managed to blow it all the way, don't worry, you can just pretend that it's fully blown and look at it, okay? So just look at this balloon in your hand. And I want you to now know that all your limiting beliefs, all your fears, all your doubts is in here, okay? It's no longer in your body, it's no longer in your thoughts, it's in here. So when you get home, and I want you to go back and grab all those limiting fears and beliefs, just, it's here. Now, what do you got? A pen. What are we going to do? Puppets! Yay! <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> puppet, 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 puppet! <laughs> oh my gosh, this really is a party. <laughs> Well done, well done. <laughs> You're such a great crowd. Thank you. <laughs> Felt good, right? <laughs> it's nice to hear that sound and it's just like release. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now, this is what you can do as many times as you want at home. There's also a piece of paper. You can write on your... Um, your dream life, which I'm going to ask you now, just for the next second, so just put your papers down. And I'm going to ask you to bring back that beautiful vision of you. Okay, you remember that? You're successful, you're loved, you're admired, you've got everything that life has got to offer. Bring it back. So just close your eyes for a second. Bring it back into your heart space. And we're going to anchor it in and drop down. Okay, so I want you to imagine there's this beautiful two golden cords coming out of the soles of your feet, going all the way down into Mother Earth. And I want you to go as deep and wide as you can possibly go. Just dig as far as you can possibly get to. And in the middle of earth, I want you to imagine there's this beautiful black obsidian stone vibrating with positivity and love. And I want you to wrap your cords around and feel yourself anchor in. And I want you just to do a quick little scan of your body. See if there's any, any fears, any doubts any aches, any pains, anything else holding you back in your body, and I want you just to release, let it go, flush it out. And now, I want you to feel this pulsating energy from this black obsidian stone. You can even feel like a little pulse in your body. I want you to breathe it in, in your cords, into your body, and just feel that love and that power, that commitment, that confidence, that joy. Breathe it in. Anchor it into your heart space. This is your birthright. You can now open your eyes. This is what you are meant to feel every single day. You did not come here to play small. You came here to be magnificent. You came here to be powerful. You came here to become unstoppable. You came here to have everything in life. You just need to give yourself permission. You are the one that you've been waiting for. So take back your power. So I'm hoping that you will now join our campaign to create one million rebels by 2030, because I truly do believe that we can transform trauma into happily ever after. And it's very simple. Tag a friend, be kind. Remember the rebel framework, right? What does a rebel do? If you want to become more resilient, first thing I would do is become trauma-informed. Educate yourself around what it takes, what it is, where does it come from? Because you get different kinds of trauma, right? You get acute, you get developmental, you get collective, COVID-19, intergenerational. You get so many kinds of trauma. And where does it come from? And that will give you the tools to release it. So, and that will give you the empathy. And at the core of empathy is self-compassion. And I'm telling you now, the minute you can feel self-compassion for, for yourself, 
the whole conversation will change because you will sit there from a place of non-judgment, not just for self, but for everyone else. Never, ever forget to break those rules. So those are those limiting beliefs, all those fears and doubts that's been keeping you small, keeping you stuck. Make a list of them and do it as often as you can. Because I promise you, we've got so many limiting beliefs that's been passing on to us from generation to generation. It's not even your trauma story. It's your parents' or grandparents' or teachers' trauma story that's been passed on to you. And it's not about blame. It's but they didn't even have their own resources. They had their own traumas to deal with. It's about compassion for self and for others. Find out where does this trauma story come from? And is it true? Perhaps you always wanted that, remember that toy you wanted when you were a child? And the parents said, no, 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 you haven't done your work, you haven't proven yourself yet. That was just another trauma story. You don't have to prove yourself to be worthy, to be loved. Just being you is enough. How do we evolve? Well, you've got, a, you've got two more things in your, in your goodie bag. You've got a rubber band. I want you to put it around your wrist, and you've got a little light. Keep the other one in your hand. Russell, Russell, Russell. <laughs> okay. So now every time you've got a limiting thought, you've got a trauma story happening, I want you just to ping yourself. Okay, it's a little bit sore, but that will remind you to snap out of it. And not just snap out of yourself. This is not about being masochistic and hurting yourself, but it's about transformation. It's about reframing it. What can you say to yourself in a nicer, kinder manner? Because the only person's opinion that you should care about is your own opinion. So when you, the next time when you feel like, oh, I'm so stupid, I can't believe I did that, instead just say, I tried my best. It's the best I could do under the circumstances. And let it go, okay? And then, my favorite, don't ever forget to lighten up. Because we all have the power to stay beautiful and vibrant and that is our birthright. And if there's one thing I've learned from experiencing trauma on different levels and moving house 38 times and 14 cities and four countries, crazy, is the following. Happiness truly lies in the everyday most mundane moments. You just need to look for it. So whether you're looking for something negative to complain about or whether you look for something positive and optimistic, a lesson learned, you're gonna find it. So which one do you choose? That's ultimately your choice. Every single day, you get to make this decision. Do you choose to have a negative thought or do you choose to have a positive side, positive thought? Because this is your game of life. You might not always win, but you gotta play to become unstoppable. And shine your lights. <laughs> Thank you.